Hey guys, it's Roscoe and on the Space Catch today we're going to be talking about airliners because as you know I'm a big fan of transport and we've spoken about many different forms of course whether that's electric cars, trains in the Hyperloop sense and of course space travel and all of that, hover bikes, what have you, the airlander. But we haven't really spoken about planes and I love planes. So I've got a big collection of books about planes so here's so, uh, just one of them. Robbie Shaw's Boeing 747. This is an older book, although it's in mint condition. I think it's from about 1990, 1994, Osprey Publishing. So, Northwest Airlines 747. On the back, Cafe Pacific 747-200 in that very attractive old green livery. There is a very nice um, 200 series in that very old Northwest livery. So, yes, let's see. What do we have? There is in that boning shoe livery, which is, I think, the penultimate livery that uh, North now West, Northwest had before it merged with Delta, of course. Um, as you see, there's a comparison of the two Northwest liveries there. I really like this. But this, you know, it has that classic 70s feel to it, of course. Speaking of classic 70s feels, you don't get more classic than Pan Am. You know, the launch customer for the Boeing 747, I think it was 25 of them they bought. What was the, how did the conversation go between um, Juan Tripp and the guy in charge of Boeing? It's like, if you build it, we'll buy it. If you buy it, we'll build it. <laughs> and they did. Now, there you go. Tower Air, they're long gone now, of course. They were a charter airline. TWA, also long gone, as was planned. This is the classic TWA. You see... That looks to be a 100 series by the fact that you've got three upper windows. But, I mean, that airline chose that for its 200s as well for fleet commonality, plugged in the extra windows. So here we are, Nation Air, a Canadian charter carrier, also long gone now. The old Continental Library, which is very attractive, that's obviously now part of United Airlines and Air Canada. One of their multiple liveries they had during the 1990s. Much prefer them to the current mouthwash livery, if I'm honest. Aer Lingus had, I think, three 747s from various airlines as well as the ones it had. I think from uh, Lufthansa at some often. Very attractive that livery was. British Airways in that classic Landor livery there. Corsair. I do recall there was an incident Several years ago, BA were doing heavy maintenance. I think it was either on one of Corsair's 747 SPs or 300s. And at the handover ceremony, after all of that had been done, the pilot or whoever in the cockpit crew accidentally hit the retract undercarriage button and it just went right in front of all of the assembled guests from both airlines. Heads rolled, as you can imagine. Now, this is a classic shot. I have seen this image in another one of my books. Japan Airlines at one point were the biggest 747 operator in the world, with over 100 in service, I believe, certainly on order. And you see there various different marks, 200, 100, 300, obviously they had the 400 as well, and those special domestic versions for the Japanese market, the D version, I think it was. Obviously they could use the extra capacity of the stretched upper deck. The other Japanese airline that used those high density because it was of course all Nippon Airways. There's the old livery there. This is this is still the current one. It might have been tweaked ever so slightly, you know, like with the 7X7 it has a plane name at the front. But yes, very attractive. And they ordered a lot of 747s once the deregulation of the Japanese market to the US market started in the late 80s, early 1990s. Let's see, that Spirit Sir Freddy of course. Freddie Laker, the great airline pioneer, put out of business, of course, by these guys, amongst others. The 200 series, classic aircraft, of course. And just beautiful the proportions, which is perfect. There's another one of it taking off there. I think that might be from Gatwick, I'm not sure. Yes, it is, heading to Bridgetown, Barbados. Now, classic, British Caledonian. Amazing livery. Never had a chance to fly on the airline, of course. They had a great reputation. Taken over by British Airways, was it 1987-ish, I think it was. That plane, is that the, uh, which one is that? G Huge was its registration. And that has been all around the houses. So with BA for a while, uh, but because its engines were not the same as the Rolls-Royce engines of the standard BA fleet, it was incompatible. So after a while, it certainly was just released. There is version one of their very early liveries. They've always used the red and white to great effect, of course. More of Virgin there. Yes, Boston Bell, that plane is called. 
Continental, and obviously this is essentially now the United Airlines livery um, to change the name, and I think they're amending it so that the straight line along the cheat line, as it were, is going to become a wavy line, like we see on their 787s and probably on their A350s as well. Now here are some classic airlines. Alitalia in that wonderful green, white and red livery, and the classic Lufthansa livery from the 70s and early 80s. Much prefer that livery to the Alitalia one now, where they've dropped the cheek line and it's all white fuselage, which I know the Lufthansa has as well, but it kind of works on that because of the cleanness of the lines. Now, Olympic, obviously long gone as well, although I did love that livery. Martinair, long gone as a passenger carrier, they now just do uh, cargo airlines under the division of KLM, and LL, of course. As some more Middle Eastern airlines, the old um, Kuwait Airways uh, livery. Uh, obviously, this was the livery they had at the time of the Gulf War in 1919. Uh, MEA, uh, they're still around. They don't fly this anymore. Of course, Iraqi Airways, they've had a very troubled history for the last 30-odd years, I guess it would be now. Always loved that livery, though. It's beautiful. There's wonderful green colours. I think they fly 777s now. A couple of them anyway. So here we have South African Airways. Uh, this was obviously prior to the end of apartheid, that livery, because they brought in the new one after that. There's the old Air India, your palace in the sky livery, and Air Gabon, one of those African carriers that has 1747, usually to maintain the routes to Paris. Tiles loved this livery, the colour. I mean, I like the current one with the different shade up purple, this is just so soothing. And the classic Philippine Airlines as well. This was introduced after the revolution that got rid of the Marcos regime back in the 1980s. And there's Pakistan International. Again, they've had multiple livery changes over the years. Malaysian Airlines, Singapore Airlines, they have both updated the liveries. Since then, of course, I have had the pleasure of flying on this airline. It was absolutely fantastic. Or one of their 747 Megatops. There's the old Garuda Indonesia livery there. Very nice. I did quite like that old Garuda one, the orange. Now here is a classic shot of the old Hong Kong airport. You know, um, it's long gone, of course, now, but they used to have to approach it at turn 90 degree banking, flying over the rooftops in Hong Kong. You know, it's like how there was never an accident that killed hundreds and hundreds of people. I have no idea. Thank God there wasn't. China Airlines or CAC as I think it was then and the uh, classic JAL livery which I find very attractive. The liveries JAL has had since then I think have been pretty disappointing. Too much on this all white body in the most recent, my god, all they did was drop the cheat line and that's it, you know. It's, they've gone back to an old livery with the maidens, so very unimaginative to me. Now there was the 1990s, the um, cigarette end uh, livery as it's done because it's kind of like a lit cigarette the grey and then the red square There's that one there. Who's that? Yes, M Museum. So that's actually a plane that's on lease because it's not its full colours of course It's on lease from Malaysia Airlines according to that. Now A, a slightly older Air Canada livery again very attractive. Air Alinas Argentinas with that lovely blue shade. They've got a fantastic livery now um, on their A340s and stuff, but this is their early 70s, 80s degree. And Wardair, another Canadian charter airline that's long gone. I actually saw one of their DC-10s at Newcastle Airport in the northeast of England in the very early 1980s when I was plane spotting there. I was so jealous, of course, I was off to Toronto. There's a wonderful shot of a freighter. Look how new that is. It's still gleaming. Absolutely amazing. Where is that? It's in Kai Tak in Hong Kong. And you can see here again, it looks absolutely spotless, doesn't it? More cargo airs. Flying Tigers, another classic, classic airline. I think from the 1930s, if not earlier, flying routes in mainland China and obviously, uh, I think, with Taiwan uh, after the uh, Second World War. But they had a huge um, role to play, I think, in the Second World War, if I recall correctly. Evergreen International Japan Airlines, I can't quite make out that one at the back, that's Malaysia Airlines. So this looks like the cargo apron, I guess, is it at Kai Tak? It's Tokyo Narita. Um, more cargo ships. 
I love this shade of blue, and this is still their current livery. Of course, it looks amazing on the A380. Evergreen International, long gone, I believe. And Singapore Airlines cargo plane. I love the Singapore Airlines livery. Here's more. Uh, here is China Airlines. Air Hong Kong, long gone, of course. And that's, uh, what did they call that one? Jal Cargo. I couldn't make it out of the block lettering there. Now, this China Airlines plane, um, sadly, it was delivered in 1985. It crashed in 1991 and was destroyed on takeoff from Taipei, 29 December 1991. There were several China Airlines planes had accidents at Hong Kong. There was that one that ended up floating off the end of the runway. That was only a few months old. Um, I think some of their MD-11s uh, that were on lease to Mandarin Airlines, SSG, they also had accidents, unfortunately, were destroyed. Now, Japan Universal System Transport, I guess, it's just another logistics version of JAL. Iran Air, they're still flying those 747s and they're just about time expired. If that Iran deal remains in place under the new administration, they will be renewing with Boeing and Airbus planes. And there's an anonymous LL plane, of course, for security reasons, although how anonymous is it with that blue? Cargo UTA, French airline, most with Air France are long since gone. They were one of the first to fly 747-400s, I believe, for the Oceania routes. And that is on lease to Saudi from Cargo Lux, or the other way around, on lease to Cargo Lux from Saudi. Now, love this shot, 747 SP United Airlines. Obviously, this used to be a Pan Am ship. Uh, when they sold off their Pacific Division Pan Am, and I think it was 1986, bunch of planes with it. With it. 747 SPs, I think a couple of Tristars as well. It's very rare to see Tristar in that classic, um, and I love this, that this is a wonderful livery. Um, in that design, but you can find them. Now, that was also a wonderful United Airlines livery, the Battleship Grey with the Tulip on there. And you can see this is obviously a transitional livery uh, from Pan Am to United, so it just has still the old Pan Am billboard, the, the white body, but with just United titles. Is that at Melbourne? Doesn't say. But more SPs. That is the classic uh, apartheid era livery for SAA. There is, of course, Iran Air, and this is a private one. Who is that? Um, it was meant to be VIP for the Brunei government, but the deal fell through. In Namibia. Wonderful, wonderful livery on that. Very cheerful and bright for that country. I believe they fly F330 on that route, that would be Windhoek and uh, London and Frankfurt. That is a um, <clears throat> Middle Eastern uh, private one. Obviously, it's got a radar dome um, for the rulers to communicate with um, their armies, whatever. China Airlines again, 747 SP. Again, they farmed out a lot of them to their subsidiaries as well, like Mandarin Airlines, for instance. And there we have Cat. This is a great one. We'll take a You can see the shortened body there. That's in Zurich. Uh, the takeoff is Gatwick. This one is at Zurich. Yeah, that's back in the days when everybody had to fly to Gatwick, you know, rather than Heathrow. Classic Cafe Pacific green livery. Love that colour of green. Obviously, jade is a very lucky colour in the Far East. Um, they've updated their livery a couple of times since then, of course. Um, that's the 70s, 80s Singapore Airlines for the big top 300s. Again, Thai Airways, wonderful, wonderful livery that is. And that is a 300. Couple of 300s here for Qantas. Uh, again, the livery has been slightly updated since then. There's the old Philippine Airlines livery prior to the new one. The change is being a starburst, a sunburst on the tail and the removal of the cheek line. That was to symbolize the new era after the fall of the Marcus regime. Varig, long gone as well, of course. Swiss Air, long gone as well, of course. And Saudi, still around. Major operators of the 300. Um, these were replaced by MD-11s and A340s for that airline. Saudi still flies its Varica, like I say, it's long gone. KLM, classic carrier, has just retired its final 747 in this last week or two. Um, it's an end of an era, are always sad, but obviously planes come, planes go. Uh, this is the classic, of course, livery for KLM. 
from the centre is just marvellous. Look great on their DC tents as well. Now that is again classic Air New Zealand livery, which I do prefer this and the one that followed to the uh, black and white one they use now because I really like the teal colour, it's very distinctive. I'm not so keen on this new one, but hey, I'll get used to it. Some more 747 400s there. Malaysia, is that Visit Malaysia 1990 or whenever it was? And there's Qantas on takeoff. And again, the classic uh, Cafe Pacific green and white livery there. That's it, Gatwick again when they had to fly there. China Airlines 747, this might be the one that crashed. Yes, delivered 8th of June 1993. Crashed off the end of Kai Tak on the 4th of November 1993 and floated like a boat. Unfortunately, it was a complete write off. They had to detonate the tail, I believe, so it wouldn't cause um, trouble for incoming planes that had to land once the airport was reopened. Very, very uh, sad. But yes, here's some more. Eva Air, I think they're still around. I'm sure they are, of course. Um, on Nippon again, and there's one of their special livery um, planes, you know, because now they're doing the Star Wars ones. I think there's a BB-8 and an R2-D2, and there might be one other. And obviously there's all the Hello Kitty planes. It's very popular in Japan. There's a great lineup of planes waiting to be delivered. So we've got JAL, I think that's China Airlines, uh, Air France, British Airways, and I think is that Korean Airlines at the back. Yes, indeed, it is. And a Malev. 767 I think that is there. They're long gone as well of course. And there's that classic, um, this was like pre the all white body dark green tail livery I think. Um, so the early 1990s that lasted until. United Airlines classic livery again, the bold issue for Northwest and there's KLM 747. As I said just retired in these last few weeks. Both uh, Delta, which is now and United, still fly their 747s, but they are facing them out. Air France and SAA, great shot there, and of that. I did like that orange colour on the planes, but unfortunately the livery was too politically damaged. And it, was, it had to be uh, replaced for the new era. British Airways, Classic Land livery, current 747, no, well, the Singapore Airlines livery, it's just fantastic. And that is it. It just ends with some of the specifications. Just look how many users there are. <laughs> this is all the different airlines that have flown the 747 one time or another. Obviously, the latest information is the 8 uh, Intercontinental hasn't had great sales, of course, doing better as a cargo carrier. That's because, obviously, the A380 will have taken some of its market. And at the lower end, the wide-body twins, the A350, uh, the A330, the 787, the 777 and all that, a living way at that end. So is there really a market for the 747? It's who knows, I guess we'll find out. There will be a day where there are no 747 flying and that will be a very sad day, but who knows what they've been replaced with by then. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for a coming topic you'd like to see discussed. I like the video.